this lecture we will discuss about lens design method and tools such as SPSS, MSTS and DE. Well, a lens is learning network for sustainability. It's an international actually uh, forum where a group of like uh, uh, academicians, researchers, scholars such as you uh, have become actually part of it. They uh, develop actually sustainability like a uh, assessment methods, you know, tools, techniques, etc. They apply these into various like uh, cases from across the world. You know, they uh, prepare actually case studies. They share with each other. They publish actually research papers, books, you know, and uh, other resources which are crucial for understanding of uh, sustainability in an overall sense. Majorly targeting like a product design and some parts like uh, some cases and like architecture also. So uh, in this uh, actually lecture, uh, we will discuss about evolution of sustainability within uh, uh, design. Uh, these are the contents. So uh, hopping on with the first topic, increasing role of uh, design for sustainability. Well, uh, when we see like uh, uh, the increasing actually uh, role of uh, design, you know, for uh, intervention into like uh, uh, the design for like sustainability approaches. So the greatest actually intervention is possible at the time of uh, like a uh, uh, deciding the consumption pattern. Okay, so uh, when when we are actually uh, looking for actually some kind of like a, a product or a solution as a, like a consumer you know so the time uh, that time actually that stage has the largest potential to minimize actually the consumption of resources you know or the energy which will actually follow up for to satisfy or to fulfill our needs so the largest potential uh, uh, for like uh, this improvement is right there at that particular stage so that you can see in this graphic over here so as the time uh, uh, goes from like a, a conceptual stage till the, like a, uh, the work is actually done and the products delivered or the service is rendered you know so from the starting to the end you know the, the largest potential is at the beginning itself if you can correct so the, remember the previous lecture what we had in the NBC chapter you know so like a, a minimal actually consumption minimal actually waste that is possible through correcting our behavior our habits itself second uh, intervening on product and services so, so thus at the stage where we are designing or fabricating or manufacturing our product or rendering our like uh, services at that time also we can uh, use certain strategies to minimize the uh, impact further uh, intervening on the processes so the once actually the product or the system is in place and is under operation you know so even at that stage we can uh, uh, minimize the consumption and minimize the uh, energy uses Further in the last like intervening after products like a damages. So the for example like the once is product is like a used You know and it is like a left out or discarded, you know, even by uh, Adopting certain strategies at that time like a, for example like recycling re re reusing, you know remanufacturing etc We can minimize like a uh, up to like a certain extent. So we saw that the, the largest uh, uh, potential for this improvement is right at the beginning stage so you must focus more and more in the like a beginning stage only in the like a conceptual itself uh, stage itself so the, the emphasis should be on the prevention because rather than cure so the uh, cure is a actually uh, remedial actually method once the problem has arisen you know then comes the cure but prevention prevention actually comes before the problem has arisen so we must actually go for like handling sustainability through through like a using like a this approach you know of a emphasis on like a, a prevention so an emphasis on like a social cultural dimension so so the, so the sustainability actually involves you know all of uh, these uh, three ESC aspects and it is very important you know to address uh, and consider uh, those aspects also well the roles and responsibility for the technical definition of the solution and the attractiveness of the solution so if you see like uh, uh, th there is actually a huge role for us to uh, play uh, over here like how we can uh, uh, define a situation how we can actually elaborate a situation you know how we can uh, make it an attractive opportunity to uh, to actually deal with or to uh, to actually go for like a certain like a innovative solution in, in, in any, given, any given actually uh, context so what does the design community in general knows about design for sustainability let's see some examples so we have this uh, cardboard seat okay so well uh, you may have seen actually such uh, uh, actually uh, products around you, you know, which use actually uh, this kind of like a, a material you know so what kind of impact it can generate well very minimal right so that what uh, uh, comes to our like mind in a, like a first glance 
okay what comes to your mind after seeing this picture it's uh, actually a walnut wood uh, chair you know it's almost like a has a lived uh, like a 500 years of uh, uh, life you know so is it sustainable or not because this uh, actually product is taken from uh, like a, a tree okay so if we go for like a conscious evaluation of the, these two two products and you know, whether they are environment friendly or not so the first one looks uh, this one looks like environment friendly you know this one doesn't looks like environment friendly but if you compare you know the time and the functionality you know so how many like a number of these cardboards are needed you know to render the same service which the single product has a served for like a long period of time so there is actually a factor of time in this if you see so that is where actually this uh, the product actually designed for like a longevity you know and then extended lifespan uh, comes into picture where we consider actually an extended actually an efficient actually uh, uh, utilization period of that product because once that product is uh, manufactured and, and ready for use that must actually carry on its job for a longer period of time in order to prevent the second same product to come and replace the first one you know so how we can actually uh, minimize the need of the like a second product you know up to an extended period of time that is the task over here that is actually idea over here which is uh, which I am trying to explain. So you must actually assess your product, you know, in terms of like a longevity also how long it's going to serve. So on sustainability, like a evaluation parameters, time is a, a very important factor, like how long a product is going to serve. You see like a, this uh, uh, products uh, example I have taken from like a, a Herman Miller. Herman Miller is a famous like a furniture uh, design and manufacturing company. So any like a random chair which we use in our like houses, you know, uh, it mostly lasts for like a three years, four years, maximum like six, seven years or something like that. But this particular uh, chair is designed to last for like a, a minimum 12 years and the company offers a warranty also of like a 12 years. So that is a very new thing in uh, uh, like a, this actually product uh, domain if we see like a, no other furniture company offers uh, like a 12 years of like a warranty period of their product that means the company itself is like a confident enough that their product is going to long uh, for a longer period of time so that is where actually this uh, the uh, functionality of this uh, time comes into like a consideration so uh, there should be actually a conscious effort from the manufacturers and the agencies who are supplying actually the product so that uh, they make a product which is like a, a good enough which is going to uh, sustain the you know the test of time for a longer period of time so like how many like a persons within the design community would evaluate correctly the environmental sustainability through this like a picture you know how many of you can uh, identify which product is sustainable which product is not it is very difficult to understand because there are several other dimensions uh, the one we uh, we just now actually came across is the time so uh, there should be actually a conscious effort and it has been actually uh, developing for like a uh, quite a like a number of like a year so the in the 1970s it was like a the focus was on to like a low impact designs then in the 1990s it came about a, like a, a life cycle design then in the 2000s it came for like a, a SPSS service sustainable product service system design then in the 2005 it came for the like a sustainable distributed economic model so we will discuss the uh, some of these in the like a next slides how it has a it is evolving over the time so the product design for environmental uh, sustainability so let's see uh, low environmental like uh, impact materials or energies okay so this we have been uh, discussing in the previous lectures so the material chosen should be non-toxic natural recyclable renewable and biodegradable because if any one of this uh, is not met correctly you know the product is going to have some some kind of impact on the overall systems if it is like a toxic it's going to uh, generate some kind of like a hazard for like a, uh, some uh, like a species for example even uh, if a product is like a toxic or if it emits like a VOCs it is uh, hazardous for the human uh, uses also okay if it is less toxic it may be uh, like a hazardous at a little uh, lesser actually uh, proportion but it may be you know harmful for like other organisms you know or if it is like a non natural synthetic then it will take a very difficult uh, actually approach for the at the time of like disintegration and decay and decomposition at the end of the life cycle stage 
you know if it is like a non recyclable again it's going to last somewhere uh, in the like a landfills you know it, it is going to be there forever you know for a very uh, long period you know we have uh, studied about like acrylic and bakelite etc you know they cannot actually be degraded on their own for a very long period of time sometimes running in up to like a 50000 years that's a huge actually span of time okay so and uh, renewability and uh, biodegradability so how this uh, product life uh, cycle uh, actually approach uh, works if you see like an extended like a design horizon from product design to the design of the product life cycle stages so we must not design just the product we design actually the life cycle stages of the product so that the product is going to uh, live for an exp extended period of time okay it is like a taken care of for its like a degradation you know or uh, uh, actually it's uh, like a disintegration you know so that it can be recycled it can be like a reused and it can be dismantled and also all of these actually approaches should be actually taken care of further uh, uh, the design reference from product design to the products like a function design so the product is not the actually ultimate uh, object what we are looking for the object behind a product is to satisfy a need satisfy actually a requirement so we must actually focus on that requirement or that uh, uh, satisfaction which that product is going to create or generate okay not the products so we must actually orient our like a needs around the need okay not to the product because product is just a means to uh, to satisfy actually that particular need and the environmental design objective minimize the uh, environmental impact of the whole of the phases in relation to the functional unit so as we have seen like the uh, impact minimization is one of the very critical uh, actually uh, considerations and that we can try from like a several uh, actually uh, approaches you know so uh, when we see like a product design life uh, uh, life product life cycle design which is uh, can be called as like a eco design also a piece of good news it's available uh, as a, like a consolidated knowledge base and know how methods and tools to design environmentally uh, sustainable products but there is a bad news also the design uh, and offer of products really uh, with low environmental impact is still like a uh, extremely like a uh, limited or very like a you know a few in numbers so well there are like a number of products to fulfill a need you know the moment you name our uh, name or like a product you know there are n number of solutions available but most of them they are still having like a huge impact on the overall systems so that we actually must take care of in our designs on the third topic sustainable product service systems win win opportunities for companies and organization let's see how so the, what is sustainable product uh, service system over here since the end of the 90s has been like a studied some been, uh, business cases offering as a full package of a mix of product not owned by the customer and services show to be uh, like a capable of creating a new value decoupling it from the resource consumption so what is it we will see over here like for example uh, you may have seen like a photocopier machines okay so uh, the objective is to uh, copy the uh, or make the like a xerox copies of like any document you know or uh, like a uh, taking a, like a photocopies of a uh, or uh, or maybe taking a print or something that okay so that is the main objective but the objective is not to exactly own the uh, xerox actually machine or the photocopier machine okay so the moment you start uh, seeing a product as a like a service provider as a like a facilitator you know you will be like amazed to see like how a product actually should function you know so for an extended period of time if that xerox machine if that photocopier machine is going to serve you like a satisfactorily well that is what you want so for doing that why you need to own a machine so this experiment was actually conducted by uh, this xerox machine you may be aware of this company it's a very famous company from the photocopier actually uh, copying business so instead of like a photocopiers you know they sold copied like a uh, like a papers and documents so xerox actually offers a package deal and installs and maintain photocopiers no which is not owned by the customer and may even makes and delivers copies you know the customer pays for the like a package so whatever like a amount of like a prints or the photocopies you need well that is what you have to pay for not for the entire machine so the machine will be loaned to you uh, if you require in your premises in your office and that machine will still be the property of this 
versus Xerox company. Well, uh, you can use the facility and uh, you can pay per uh, like a print or per like a photocopy basis. So this is an actually, if you see, an innovative actually uh, business model, you know, offering a, a ownerless actually photocopier uh, machines with all inclusive life cycle services. Also, the company is actually responsible for uh, uh, maintenance operations and uh, uh, in case some kind of like a repair is needed or, you know, some like a supplies are needed, like additional like a cartridges and inks and paper, etc. So the company actually takes care of uh, uh, those actually things. But in the present uh, actually scenario, whenever we buy a product, you know, the liability of that uh, uh, company which has ma manufactured that product, you know, ends in a very short span of time, which they call it as a, like a warranty period, you know, which varies uh, like generally from like six months to one year up to like a, uh, sometimes and rarely in like a few years. Okay. And after that, actually company doesn't provides uh, uh, free services or uh, it doesn't takes care of those, uh, like the components or the parts of it, you know, it, it, it just even stops like a, uh, supplying like a uh, parts of it for example the the biggest electronic uh, like a uh, uh, brand like a uh, apple which is very famous across the world you know so it, uh, it actually sells a state of the art like a uh, computing machines like a uh, laptops you know and pads and uh, phones so this apple company actually sells uh, these products with a uh, warranty of like maybe six months to one year period usually okay and it charges like a like a x amount for like an extended like a period of like a warranty for example like two years and after that it doesn't extends that uh, uh, warranty and leaves the customer uh, leaves the actually user in the lurch if something in case something goes wrong you know they will charge a hefty actually amount to uh, to actually uh, provide the service as well as provide the like a uh, components or the spare parts and after like a five year or six uh, six uh, year of like a period they just render that product actually uh, uh, obsolete you know they leave it uh, they, they call it uh, they start calling that model as like a vintage model and they actually stop producing or providing any kind of like a service or components or spare parts needed for that machines so these uh, actually apple made machines are very uh, heavy duty very efficient and very pricey machines okay uh, if you compare with any like a electronic available in the market they charge like a twice to thrice in some cases like a four times also so for like a such a like a heavily priced machine is it justified to have like a such a sh short period of like a uh, warranty period or uh, stopping the even supply of like a services and spare you know for that product so with this way if you see apple is really bad on doing like a sustainability uh, aspects of like these products and this company unintentionally or intentionally whatever that needs to be seen or checked you know is promoting actually a lot of like a huge electronic waste you know and is a burdening customer uh, to buy actually uh, new models you know uh, indirectly so that is actually a uh, illegitimate illegitimate actually a way of uh, promoting actually this uh, uh, product consumption in the masses so the responsibility of the company the responsibility of the like a uh, uh, products uses also lies with the uh, manufacturing company it doesn't it should not end with the the moment the product is sold sold the responsibility of the company should not also end so that is the consideration uh, being actually uh, said over here what if the uh, service of that product you know is uh, actually this sellable actually thing not the product itself so what if these company they start actually uh, loaning us uh, like electronic like equipment and gadgets and uh, we keep them using for like a uh, like a x amount of like a time and uh, we kind of give it back to the company if we do not want uh, to use it any longer if we want uh, or if we want to like a uh, uh, buy a, like a new model or something like that so in that case actually the charge will be like a per like a, a time usage or something like that so this actually concept is called as the product service system where actually service becomes the main actually criteria of like a, a payment so in such actually a scenario of like a product service system based approach the responsibility of the company changes dramatically now the company is responsible to maintaining actually that product so they will design their product to last for like a longer period of time and that is what precisely this xerox company did which is a very novel idea uh, like they made actually efficient machines which lasted for a very long period of time very extended period of time so with the same like a machine they were able to you know render services for an extended period of time uh, in turn actually uh, saving on like a you know manufacturing several machines which may actually be uh, serving in that actually n number of years
So this is actually called uh, uh, SPSS, service, uh, Sustainable Product Service System. So further, like how, how you see, what is the like a sellable? So in a like a conventional, actually a traditional, like a product sale actually system. So the sale is of the product. But in a sustainable product service system, you see in this illustration over here on this slide, you know, the sale is of the satisfaction unit. Okay, so we are not selling the product. We are selling the uh, satisfactory actually uh, consumption or the uses of it. So what is the innovating actually point if you see in the conventional like a product uh, sale system, the technology is the uh, actually innovative uh, actually point. But in this uh, SPSS system, if you see interaction of the actors becomes the actually you know a point of innovation. And on the uh, what is the actually value received by the customer? If you see the the value what we receive by buying a product is that become uh, we become the actually owner of that product. But in this one, actually there is actually a group sharing or a common sharing or the excess actually becomes the actually the value which we get out of uh, like a such kind of actually satisfaction system. So this is what actually SPSS is. You know, so the economic interest of the manufacturer fosters the design of the environmentally sustainable products. So this is how actually the company becomes responsible for the actually longer period of uh, uh, uses or the consumption of that particular product. So of course they will be uh, maximizing the efficiency or the longevity of that products. Okay, which in turn will lead us to the uh, several aspo, uh, aspects of like a uh, several strategies of uh, this uh, sustainability can be achieved. For example, uh, if it promotes like uh, uh, reuses, then uh, we can go for actually uh, optimizing on the like a uh, uses part, services part, you know, the uses part. Further on the collection part, if you a uh, responsible actually disposing system, you know, uh, it can actually avoid landfills and in incineration in a shorter period of time. The product can be utilized for like a longer period of time. You know, on the pre-production stage, if you see, uh, you know, the, even the energy efficiency can be achieved because the company will be responsible to uh, make it efficient on resources and the energy consumption. You know, and uh, uh, energy extraction also. So the uh, we can say if we are if we are using the one product for like a lifespan of like a two like a average product then we are at least saving the resources which were needed to manufacture the second product second unit of product okay so that is how we will actually uh, save on the resource consumption also on the production part if you see uh, like the finishing assembly you know manufacturing so these also will be actually uh, having like a efficient actually uh, impact you know and on the distribution the storage you know transportation you know packaging so there will be saving as you can see on these parts also so in an overall actually if you see this uh, uh, the uh, the life cycle of a stage you know there will be saving in each and actually uh, domain of it you know so there oh in on, in an overall sense this spss has the potential to uh, to minimize the impact in an overall sense you know so the design for actually materials consumption minimization you know design for like energy consumption minimization resource renewability and biocompatibility for resources toxicity and harmfulness minimization for products lifespan extension for the maintenance repair upgrade remanufacturing reuse you know intensification etc for recycling composting energy recovery you know design for disassembly so these are the actually uh, approaches these are the actually strategies which spss has the potential to actually uh, address to further if you see uh, are the like a sustainable product service systems also applicable to low and medium income contexts let's see uh, are they uh, promising models to economically foster and uh, uh, even social uh, equity and are they win-win models for fostering all of the sustainability dimension well it has the potential to uh, cater to like uh, this uh, uh, like a low or medium income context also it can actually be taken up at any level we will discuss uh, with some examples in the like uh, coming slides so yeah so this actually book uh, uh, gives us an extensive actually detail it has a set of like a uh, articles which are written by like a several like a scientists and uh, actually designers from across the world which will be helpful uh, in understanding the this spss system through this uh, book you may be uh, you can refer actually this book uh, when you are free after this class so uh, sustainable product service system and offer model providing an integrated mix of products and services that are together able to deliver a unit of satisfaction okay fulfill a particular customer demand you know based on innovative interaction between the stakeholders of the value production and satisfaction system where the ownership of the product and the uh, and or the like a direct cost of its life cycle services remain by the 
uh, providers are being actually paid per unit of satisfaction so that the economic interest of the providers continuously seeks environmentally and uh, uh, socio-ethically beneficial new solutions so this is actually intention of the uh, SPSS and that is how actually we see there is a huge actually potential by adopting SPSS, uh, SPSS system in our like a uh, consumeristic actually uh, product uh, domain so in the next topic let's see what is the distributed economy DES a promising model for locally based uh, uh, sustainability so we have seen in the previous lectures like how uh, this globalization has brought actually several kinds of like a repercussions and you know, the, the impact of any product which is may, uh, being manufactured uh, in one corner of the world has increased you know because of this uh, uh, because of this uh, indirect emissions which are uh, happening due, due to this transportation you know and things so how this uh, distributed economy actually works so since 2005 some models have been studied as a promising model for locally uh, based sustainability distributed economies selective share of production distributed to regions where activities are organized in the form of small scale flexible units that are synergetically uh, connected with each other the concept calls for a transformation uh, transformation in the industrial system towards de departing from the socio economically and environmentally sustainable uh, unsustainable dynamic uh, uh, associated with the large scale centralized production units that are favored by neoclassical economic drivers so how it works uh, you see this uh, I, I would like to explain you through this uh, like uh, uh, some examples for example we have like uh, this centralized uh, uh, like a uh, power plants for example like a coal based power plant or uh, maybe hydroelectric power plants or maybe nuclear power plants or so on so they actually generate a, a huge actually uh, uh, quantity of like a power you know and this supply for like a larger actually area but compared to this if we go for like a smaller actually power generation units for example like a home based uh, solar power grids or maybe a neighborhood based actually power generation grids or maybe a city based actually power generation uh, like a network so the impact of this uh, will be lesser why because the footprint uh, because the ecological footprint of like a project of like a, this scale is very high Okay, if you divide it into like a smaller actually uh, unit, so the overall impact can be minimized. So this is where actually this uh, uh, distributed uh, economic models uh, comes into the like a uh, power generation system. So this is called a distributed energy generation system. So they, it is uh, in place of like a one centralized very huge actually power plant. We can go for actually uh, minimal uh, smaller actually uh, unit based actually power generation like a systems. So this is what it means over here. Another uh, example for like a centralized uh, uh, manufacturing units based on maybe one country supplying to like a, to the n, n number of countries. Why can't we have actually uh, this uh, economy uh, distributed actually manufacturing uh, systems also in place to have a, uh, like a distributed uh, like a manufacturing facilities you know at, at like our most of the places in most of our like a, almost like every state why can't we have like a such facilities because for having actually centralized uh, manufacturing facilities you know there is a larger impact on the like a social sector also the workforce is uh, forced to move from like their native places to these actually uh, centers or these actually focal points where these manufacturing units are actually uh, established <coughs> So this is how uh, this uh, distributed economic model uh, looks like. You can see in this illustration over here, uh, which uh, like gives a picture of like a paradigm shift from like a centralized uh, large production units and distribution system to a decentralized or a distributed actually model. So if you see from like a centralized to decentralized to distributed, so these are the three verticals over here, which explains uh, this uh, actually concept uh, graphically. So the how the structure is. So the structure in the centralized actually system is there like a hierarchical uh, uh, control is there. You know, in decentralized there are like a no uh, intermediaries. You know, in the distributed it is like a distribution uh, under like a distributed control. So you can see like a, this one actually centralized system is controlling all of these uh, uh, actually domains. And here there are like a smaller but uh, de decentralized actually domains. So like a, some things are actually handled by this one. Some actually few things are handled by like a, this actually a decentralized uh, actually node. But in this one, if you see. Uh, the the units are actually these the cent uh, uh, centralized units are actually defragmented into like a smaller units 
and all of them are actually operating independently in different locations you know so they are actually distributed uh, actually at different actually uh, you know a larger actually area so that they can serve you know locally uh, in an efficient manner so this is how actually uh, this visualization is and even for the like a consumption part you know for example like a resource consumption you know energy consumption or like other types of like a, a uh, like a utilization of like a manpower you know, so that also will be uh, will get actually distributed so uh, the impact on the surrounding will be relatively uh, or can comparative uh, comparatively will be very uh, very low for example if a manufacturing unit is defragmented into like a 10 smaller units so the kind of resources which is uh, which it going to like uh, extract from the surrounding will also get distributed at uh, uh, those 10 actually different locations so the overall impact you know compared to like a uh, uh, the one bigger company which will extract the the equal number of like a volume of those resources from the one place you know will also get uh, distributed at 10 different places so the overall the resources needed for these 10 uh, uh, different places will get distributed in these uh, uh, actually 10 places so minimizing the impact you know further like a uh, energy consumption or for example like a uh, uh, water consumption so uh, a factory or maybe uh, a bottling a water bottling plant or maybe a uh, uh, drink actually uh, manufacturing or making company you know which is located uh, uh, at one place you know may actually uh, take uh, like a huge amount of like a uh, water from the like a uh, ground uh, uh, under the uh, underground you know for at one place you know if we distribute it at uh, n number of like location so the impact on those uh, every location will get divided by that number n so this is what actually this concept is this is what it is uh, uh, is actually uh, talking about so for the uh, like uh, energy you know food you know water manufacturing you know software knowledge for everything uh, even for the like a design if we go for like a distributed actually approach even for like a designing so uh, design can uh, take place more effectively in that actually uh, location for wherever we are designing like uh, we have studied like uh, this vernacular architecture vernacular design so that particular design serves to that place so uh, the resource pers from person from actually that area may be able to understand actually that philosophy you know of vernacularity in a more effective way so that person can actually help building the design process or the design methodology in a more effective way so this is what uh, actually it, is, it looks like on the size and proximity if you see like uh, this centralized system works in, uh, in a very far from like an end user and uh, in a very large format uh, this uh, decentralized actually system works uh, uh, to like a smaller actually scale but uh, near uh, almost near to the end user but uh, this one uh, is works at the even like a smaller level and uh, by the end user so this is uh, where actually this the difference is so the so small scale locally based production units empowering end user controls on like essential activities more interested safeguarding local uh, environment so this is how actually this concept uh, uh, looks like of like a spss uh, further uh, uh, when we see over here uh, so the selling point uh, from conventional approach from like a product to like a unit of satisfaction you know for innovation from technology to stakeholder configuration you know from the like a customers like a value individual ownership to like a access to that uh, product or services so this is what actually spss is and uh, compared to this uh, this is what actually this uh, distributed economic model is you know from like a a uh, hierarchical uh, centralized model to a distributed model so these are the actually two uh, philosophies what we were actually discussing uh, in this lecture so locally based sustainable opportunities in low middle income or kind of like a all context you know so which can be uh, utilized so one more example i would like to bring uh, uh, to to actually uh, show you here is uh, about uh, this off grid uh, actually electric system it's a home based actually solar system you know to provide uh, power to the uh, families so this uh, actually m power uh, m power company offers to tanzania rural people a solar home system shs which includes the hardware to generate uh, uh, solar energy solar panel plus storage plus wires you know energy using like a products eup two lights phone charger etc uh, customers pay uh, as a, like a pay per period like a, on, a, on a daily basis you know off grid electric uh, retains the ownership of uh, these uh, uh, shs and uh, eups 
Cutting initial and life cycle cost of SSH uh, hardware makes it accessible and sustainable in time to uh, low income people and organizations. You know, and, you know, in an overall sense for like everybody. For example, like uh, these uh, harvesting like a solar energy is a very uh, green concept, but the, it comes with a, like a, a technical actually issue of like a, a maintaining uh, of the like a battery part, which is going to store the that electricity power for consumption in the night time. So if the company has the ownership of that batteries, those batteries, you know, they will be taking care of, uh, you know, then extended like a longevity, you know, maintenance, repair if needed, or even like a replacement if the need is. So if the uh, ownership remains of this product with the company, you know, they will be in a better position to uh, like a keep it running for a longer period of time. But we have seen like how this uh, novel approach is, you know, this was adopted even from like our state, several state governments and the government of India also like a few years ago. But the, whoever have bought actually these products, now these products are actually thrown, they are not in use any longer. So they are uh, in turn generating a huge amount of waste and that too like a toxic waste. These uh, uh, batteries which store actually electricity, you know, they are very hazardous uh, uh, in nature and once discarded uh, irris uh, irresponsibly, they are going to create actually a huge impact in the ecosystem. So how we can save on uh, uh, through like a such impacts also through this SPSS system is one of the beautiful actually examples uh, to talk about uh, here. So let's discuss the next topic which talks about a system design for sustainability, a new role for designers. So what is the system design we will discuss over here. Uh, design for uh, like design approaches and skills so can see from the like a sustainable system approach you know design the satisfaction of a particular demand you know unit of satisfaction and all its related products and services you know stakeholder configuration approach you know design the interaction of the stakeholder of a, a particular satisfaction system and then system sustainability approach so design such a like a stakeholder interaction you know this model that the economic regions continuously seek after both environmentally and socio-ethically beneficial new solutions. So uh, any product like we have discussed earlier doesn't sit in isolation. You know every solution uh, is meant for people. It is utilized by the people. You know and there are number of like a stakeholders who uh, are involved in uh, in like a fabrication or you know the resource resource actually a sourcing. You know then the power generation, then operations, you know the uses, you know and uh, at the disposal. So all of these stakeholders. If we uh, combine them into like a one unit and if we design the, our like a product and the service uh, system in such a way that it serves uh, the, uh, the system efficiently and if there is any need needed to improve like uh, the entire system. So if, if for, for that actually we can intervene at that actually uh, stakeholder level or that actually unit level to improve the efficiency of that product. Uh, and in, in turn we can actually improve the efficiency of the entire systems. So that is where actually this uh, system sustainability comes into the picture. By intervening at uh, uh, one actually stakeholder or at one level, how we can improve the entire actually uh, system around that product. So this is what it, uh, it, it talks about. You know, so uh, well, uh, good news in this actually area, it's available uh, as a, like a knowledge base and know-how methods and tools to design sustainable product service systems. Recently developed for like SPSS applied to distributed economies, but there are uh, some challenges also design and the offer of win-win sustainable product service systems with the, is still uh, like a very limited. So we have seen like a, like a some uh, solutions which uh, certain companies are offering in the market, but they are very limited, very few in number. So this uh, uh, the direct product selling approach is still actually uh, has the major share rather uh, the, the SPSS uh, almost has a, like a negligible presence in the entire like a uh, uh, economic actually model of that, like a today's like a society. So how this share can be improved is a matter of discussion now how this efficiency can be uh, brought in. So state of the art like given the great opportunities and responsibilities as well, as well as the new knowledge base and know how developed for the designers. Today few within the design community are equipped with a solid knowledge base and know-how uh, for on like a design for sustainability. Today the design community as a whole is still more part of the problem than part of the solution. So how this can be uh, improved is a matter of discussion. How you can uh, adopt these strategies, adopt these uh, approaches while you are designing your like a uh, projects. So this must actually uh, in, uh, get incorporated in your thinking, in your like a thought process for uh, going about like a, any project. So from here and onward, we will discuss uh, about uh, uh, certain strategies, you know, of uh, like a sustainability design uh, 
uh, in like our uh, product design uh, actually uh, domain so one by one we will talk about uh, product uh, environmental effects and requirements life cycle assessment product life cycle design for like a life cycle and functional approach for strategic and guidelines approaches methods and tools so let's move on to the first one under like this series the sixth topic of discussion under this lecture uh, product environmental effects and requirements so what are the environmental requirements it is to design for uh, uh, minimizing products environmental uh, impacts you know environmental damaging effects you know so the each environmental effect is based on a, a substances exchange you know uh, between the nature and the environment and a process of a production and consumption system you know so this is how actually the interaction of the material is happening we are sourcing it from uh, nature you know we are processing it again we are throwing it back into the nature so how what kind of like a impacts are being generated that is like a, a very much evident like it is not going uh, as like desired so the input in the inputs like substance extraction from the environment output substance emission in the environment so these are the two things happening on so we discussed in the like a life cycle stage you know any life cycle of a product or, or any product uh, consumes like a uh, resources in its like a uh, input side and you know and it excretes it exhausts actually certain like a uh, things as a like a uh, output as a like a uh, effect of like a you know that processing and at the maybe end of the life cycle stage of that product and all so that becomes actually forms the output part okay so inputs and their like a, a damaging environmental effects well resource exhaustion first of all first and foremost so resources are getting uh, depleted you know alteration of the ecosystems like balance and you know, also the balance is actually getting uh, actually disturbed for example uh, like if you are extracting water you know from the like a uh, aquifers below the like earth surface you know those aquifers are getting actually dried and then the water table in the entire area is gradually actually have started like a going down and several uh, like a cities countries you know are facing actually this problem in the recent times that there is no uh, actually groundwater available uh, for like a several hundred feet uh, in the ground okay so these are the actually damaging uh, uh, outputs of like extraction like uh, processes you know uh, outputs and their uh, uh, damaging environmental impacts well of course we are all aware of uh, global warming you know stratospheric uh, zone depletion uh, is happening acidification is happening you know the acid rain uh, like a terrestrial and fresh water uh, disturbances are also happening in the fresh water uh, ocean is acidification winter smog you know uh, the suspended like a particulate matter in the air you know summer smog you know photochemical ozone formation etc uh, eutrophication you know hu uh, human toxicity like a, a carcinogens and other like a, a source of like a disease causing actually compounds are in the atmosphere these days and of course the waste so these are the actually uh, some bad actually outputs further what is life cycle uh, assessment so let's have a quick look uh, like a, uh, can we associate the environmental effects to a product well how okay so the approach is you know product life cycle approach or functional unit evaluation method is like a lca so we have discussed the lca uh, before like how we can apply uh, to any like a given product and how we can uh, assess the stakeholders and that entire actually a system so you can see over here this is the actually a uh, diagram of like a products like a life cycle you know stages so starting from like a if you see like a, a pre production you know to production to distribution to use is then again like a disposing so from here we, we are uh, starting this whole process you know so in this uh, actually uh, like a segment you see like there is a like, resource extraction you know uh, material energy uh, goes into the like a uh, producing it you know and then uh, for like a production stage it goes for like a final manufacturing you know assembly finishing etc and then again is for the like distribution packaging transportation storage you know the uses part of it the uh, actual actually consumption part of it you know then it goes for the like a collection once the life expected life uh, life expectancy is over once the usage is actually completed and fulfilled then it goes for like a again like a recycling reusing and etc or maybe end up ends up in the uh, landfill okay so this is where actually this uh, disposing uh, uh, actually approach comes you know so this is how it actually it works like a uh, like a normally so what is like a functional unit well uh, is a functional unit is not the product to be designed or assembled 
you know, or assess, but the whole of the processes associated with the fulfillment of a giving uh, a function. So the functional unit is a quantified performance of the product that is being assessed to use as a reference unit within an environmental impact assessment of all uh, its life cycle stages. So remember we, uh, we spoke of like SPSS. So this is related with that SPSS. We are talking about the functional unit of a, like a uh, product in terms of fulfilling the, actually the service uh, of it. So uh, what is a life cycle assessment? Well, it is a quantitative method to model and assess the environmental effects of a given product throughout its life cycle and in relation to its like a functional unit. So LCA is an internationally recognized method. Its practice is guided by international standards ISO uh, 14040 LCA series. So like for example, uh, uh, it is given over here life cycle assessment of uh, like a, co a coffee maker. Well. Uh, uh, it allows us to quantify the environmental effects a product is responsible for. So you see on these like a uh, three like a assessments over here, what are the uh, possible actually damages, impacts, you know, and after effects caused by a simple product such as like a coffee maker. Okay, so like uh, the ecological damages, well, uh, global warming, eutrophication, you know, acid drains, uh, ecotoxicity, you know, habitat alteration. And the human health damage is uh, uh, actually part so health damaging like a uh, substances photochemical smog and air pollutants carcinogens you know ozone depletion on the resource depletion part well it's causing like a uh, uh, consumption of, of uh, fossil fuels you know uh, water minerals and several other things so this is how actually we can uh, uh, further we can take help of like a uh, some softwares which are uh, uh, recommended for like uh, this life cycle uh, analysis and we can uh, we can uh, uh, carry out an uh, in-depth actually analysis of like how the components of this uh, as a, like a unique product actually are sourced from you know how much uh, energy invested how much of like a, a material is invested you know how much of energy is going to consume in its overall like a life cycle you know in, in this like operation phase and what are the kind of after effects at the end of its life life cycle Further, uh, in the eighth actually topic of discussion, well, uh, product life cycle design, life cycle and functional approach. So here, uh, uh, like uh, we will talk about this, uh, uh, like a life cycle design, which can be called as like a eco design also, a design for the environment, which are the actually synonyms. Okay, so the disciplines integrating uh, environmental requirements within the product design process. So here, if you see like the approach an extended design horizon, okay, uh, from product design to the design of the product life cycle stages. So this is what we actually focusing on. We are not just designing the product, we are designing the life cycle of that product. So the design uh, reference from like a product design to the products function design. So we have discussed in the SPSS. That is what actually this, uh, uh, the, the, this approach of this SPSS is further actually bifurcated and made into like a actionable points. For example, if you are going to design uh, like a product, for example, a milk actually a packaging uh, actually unit, then how we can do it, how we can uh, think of it as a not an end product. For example, like a currently whenever we buy a packet of milk, okay, we end up with that uh, uh, actually packaging also. Okay, so how can we actually go for a, a service based actually solution, a product service based solution so that the, the ob our objective, our actually requirement is to receive the milk, okay, not the uh, actually packaging part. So how we can receive the milk as well as uh, uh, still at the same time we can manage to uh, give the packaging back to the manufacturer or the company and uh, there it can be again taken care of for like a recycling or reusing or, or uh, things like that. So this is where what actually we are talking about designing for the like a life cycle stages designing for like a products like a functional design. Okay, the environmental design objective minimize the environmental impact of the whole of the phases in relation to the functional units. Well, uh, that's the overall actually uh, purpose of this uh, uh, exercise. So some actually uh, papers and literatures are given under uh, in this book. Maybe you can uh, refer it in your free time. The design of the like a product life cycle stage is that while considering all requirements aims at minimizing the environmental impact of the whole of the life cycle phases in relation to the functional unit. So this is what uh, uh, actually means. Further in the net, uh, next topic, we will discuss about uh, product life cycle uh, design strategies and guidelines. So the, what are the strategies we can actually apply in our designs? Uh, so here uh, we will actually see uh, some examples in detail and we will discuss about some strategies in detail. So look, uh, low actually uh, uh, 
cost actually low uh, life cycle impact actually design so on the environmental studies minimizing material consumption minimizing uh, uh, energy consumption optimizing resource renewability and biocompatibility minimizing resources toxicity and harmfulness you know uh, product lifespan of optimization extending the life cycle uh, lifespan of the materials and design for disassembly well these uh, strategies we have discussed uh, uh, in detail uh, earlier we will see in uh, more detail in these uh, coming slides so for example if you see like this uh, uh, this electric guitar as a like a product you know so what is the approach do you see compared to these uh, actually uh, figures over here these two pictures over here well of course minimizing the material content of that product okay so this is the approach you know adopted in uh, this uh, uh, actually uh, like equipment well it's a it's 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 done for the like aesthetical purpose also but at the same time it solves the problem of like a resource uh, uh, minimization also because for an electric guitar you doesn't need actually this volume to resonate actually and create that sound effect with this actually box generates while playing the guitar okay so why uh, while uh, like uh, how by uh, by removing actually this uh, uh, actually material over here we can minimize the actually uh, consumption of like uh, this uh, wood because this is actually uh, like uh, these guitars are actually made naturally by by using like uh, wood you know so the how, how this uh, this kind of design can minimize the consumption of the material so dematerializing the product or some of its components so that's the objective in like a uh, uh, one of the strategies which we are talking about here about like a material minimization okay so this is one example over here further uh, in the like a discussion part like a minimizing material consumption well how so minimizing material content of a product you know de dematerialize the product or some of its components you know digitalize the product or some of its components you know miniaturize maybe reduce in the scale and the proportions you know avoid oversized dimensions you know reduce thicknesses you know apply ribbed structures to increase structural stiffness you know avoid extra components with little functionality so like, these are uh, this seems to be very uh, common sensical actually approach and ideas but this is very important uh, for us to consider while we are uh, on the drawing uh, drawing stage uh, while we are on the conceptualization uh, conceptualizing state uh, uh, for like any like a product design further minimizing uh, scraps and discards uh, select processes that reduce scraps and discarded material during the production in case simulation systems to optimize transformation processes you know further like a minimize or avoid packaging avoid packaging first of all you know apply materials only where absolutely necessary otherwise uh, do not uh, uh, use like a packaging materials you know de uh, design the package to be part or uh, to become the part of the product so that the uh, the moment the product is delivered to the user you know the packaging usually gets discarded immediately so the lifespan of a, like a packaging uh, material is uh, comparatively like a very short you know compared to the product so how this disparity can be actually uh, uh, minimized so that is the actually uh, objective over here further this is strategy of like a minimizing material consumption during uses so design for more efficient consumption of operational materials design for more efficient supply of raw materials design for more efficient use of maintenance materials you know design systems for consumption of passive materials you know which doesn't uh, utilizes energy extensively you know design for uh, cascading recycling systems you know facilitate the user to reduce material consumption you know set the products default state at minimal uh, materials consumption so anyways like for example we have these uh, uh, the, the like automobiles so they uh, keep consuming uh, uh, like a fuel for their uh, like a uh, uh, entire lifespan so the how this uh, uh, the efficiency of this fuel consumption can be uh, increased so this is what we are actually talking about over here minimizing the materials consumption during the uses period further uh, in the next uh, strategy adopt flexible material consumption systems like during uses so engage digital support systems with dynamic configuration design a dynamic material consumption for different operational stages you know engage sensors to adjust uh, materials consumption according to differentiated operational stages you know reduce resource consumption in the products uh, default state so this is how actually we can go for a, a flexible material consumption system also during the operations uh, uh, stage Finally, 
this is strategy of minimizing material consumption during the product development phase. So minimizing the consumption of stationary goods and uh, their packaging, uh, engaging like a digital tools in designing, modeling and prototyping, you know, engaging like a digital tools for documentation, communication and presentation. So the kind of stuff we do in our like a studios and classroom. So how we can minimize on the uh, stationary and how we can minimize on the other like a uh, support uh, like a uh, materials and how we can go like a uh, like a uh, as much as uh, possible like a, a digital so for like a designing also we can go for digital sketching you know the, a digital 3d modeling you know digital uh, like a prototyping you know digital like a uh, simulation you know and testing and then finally if need is there then we can go for the final like a material based like a prototyping and our experiments okay so in turn we will end up actually reducing the uh, materials required for like a uh, product development phase so see the, the kind of potential uh, this uh, actually uh, exercise has is really immense you know and it's re really eye-opening for you as a like a designer so you can uh, you should employ actually such uh, strategies in your like a uh, design exercises further we will see for uh, uh, energy minimizing uh, energy consumption in the like a uh, products so we have uh, actually this uh, uh, case example over here so uh, the objective the strategy is designed for like a energy minimization so the example of select the most efficient energy consumption uh, system during uses so design system for consumption of passive energy sources okay so it's a simple actually fridge you know the refrigerator given over here so this uh, free up fridge with passive use of the outdoor cold so how this uh, actually fridge uses the actually outside cold for the like a, which is like a normally uh, there in the like a colder countries and uh, reduces the actually energy demand so this is why actually this example is uh, given over here that it it, uh, it utilizes the uh, outside actually uh, chilly weather to create this uh, uh, this uh, cold actually uh, atmosphere inside this fridge further so uh, what are the strategies we can go for uh, uh, considering while we are uh, thinking about minimizing energy consumption so that there are actually five strategies given over here we will discuss one by one uh, minimize energy consumption during pre-production and production stages so what are the smaller like a uh, finer uh, strategies uh, which can be adopted for this like select materials with low energy intensity of course so the material intensity of the pro product should be lesser like we have discussed uh, uh, like alloys you know and polymer so these are really uh, energy intensive material they actually consume a lot of power a lot of like uh, energy you know in their like a uh, uh, production stages so uh, if it is possible to go for like as uh, other like uh, alternative materials for like a uh, such in, in energy intensive material we must actually go for those select processing technologies with the lowest uh, uh, energy consumption possible uh, like a uh, this uh, uh, consumption pattern you know we should go for energy efficient machinery you know use heat emitted in uh, certain processes for preheating other like a process flow so the energy wasted in some like a process can be utilized for the other process so this kind of like approach you know engage the pump and motor speed regulators with dynamic configuration you may have seen actually some examples where uh, the bicycles are actually fitted uh, with the uh, dynamos so the kinetic energy of that uh, wheel you know can be utilized by that dynamo to create uh, uh, through generate actually power you know needed to light the bulb which is installed and that cycle so that is actually what we are talking about over here the energy wasted in uh, like a some uh, uh, actually industrial process you know some process can be utilized for the other process further uh, equip the machinery with intelligent power of uh, utilities so that there is no power wasted once the machine is not in the use you know optimize the overall dimensions of the engine you know facilitate engine maintenance define uh, accurately the tolerance parameters you know have to optimize the uh, volumes of required real estate optimize the uh, stock taking systems you know optimize transportation systems and scale down the weight and dimensions of all transportable materials and semi products you know engage uh, efficient generator uh, general heating you know illumination and ventilation in the buildings you know so these are actually several uh, uh, methods uh, several actually a uh, finer like uh, strategies through which we can uh, go on energy uh, like a uh, uh, consumption reduction in the like a uh, pre production and production stages Further towards the like a next stage, minimizing energy consumption during transportation and storage. So design compact products with high storage density so that uh, uh, every square inch, every like a volume inch is actually used for like a uh, like a transportation and uh, uh, the efficient actually transportation of the stuff. Okay, so that we can uh, uh, maximize the uh, uses out of, like, uh, out of the like a fuel consumed. 
you know design concentrated uh, uh, products you know equip uh, products with the on site assembly scale down the product weight scale down the packaging weight you know decentralize activities to reduce transportation volumes select local material and energy sources so these could be the actually strategies for like a minimizing energy consumption in transportation and user stays further uh, the third strategy of like a select the most efficient uh, energy consumption system during the use so uh, while using why uh, uh, we must actually use uh, like a energy uh, saving actually uh, methods and strategies so design products for collective use design for energy efficient operational stages you know design for energy efficient maintenance design systems for like consumption of passive energy sources you know engage highly efficient energy conversion systems you know design or engage like highly efficient engines design or engage like highly efficient power transmission uh, use highly uh, culled uh, materials and uh, uh, technical uh, components design for localized energy supply scale down the weight of transportable uh, goods you know design energy recovery system design energy saving system so these are actually uh, uh, strategies needed uh, for like uh, reducing energy efficiency uh, reducing actually uh, energy consumption sorry in the uh, like uh, uses actually uh, uh, period further we have uh, this fourth uh, strategy enable a variable consumption of energy to follow uh, demand fluctuations so engage uh, digital dynamic support system design dynamic energy consumption system for differentiated operational stages you know engage sensors to adjust the consumption during the differential uh, like operational stages you know equip machinery with intelligent power off utilities program product default state at minimal energy consumption you know and finally we have this fifth strategy of minimizing energy consumption during product development stage so engaging like efficient workplace heating illumination and ventilation systems you know engaging like digital tools for communicating with the remote working sites so these uh, are the very exhaustive actually uh, strategies uh, list of the strategies you can see you know which are designed specifically which are actually laid out here specifically for uh, various life stages of uh, like a product you know and how uh, and where i think we should made uh, we should make actually this intervention to minimize the impact you know and uh, minimizing the actually uh, energy consumption is the actually idea uh, being discussed over here so the next uh, strategy over here is designed for minimizing resources toxicity and harmfulness so in an overall like a uh, life cycle uh, stages of uh, like a product so minimizing material toxicity and harmfulness minimizing energy toxicity and harmfulness so let's see one uh, example over here so we have uh, this uh, uh, example of uh, this actually uh, microfiber uh, like a uh, rags for like a uh, home cleaning okay so it says like a uh, uh, select non toxic or harmful uh, like harmless material design products that do not consume toxic and harmful uh, harmful actually materials rags for like home cleaning in fire microfiber no need for like detergents so if we actually uh, see this uh, uh, like a uh, uh, fiber over here so this has this uh, capacity to uh, wipe out uh, the dirt and uh, the kind of like a waste a material which we want to like a uh, wipe our like utensils and surfaces like a clean in the like a kitchen okay so this material doesn't requires actually detergents in general so how the the quality of the material itself can be made actually useful for creating actually uh, the harmless actually materials because detergents and other like a cleaning agents they are somehow like i have actually carry this uh, toxicity some actually uh, amount of like tox toxicity in them further environmental impacts of uh, like a material so depends on uh, like a material specific characteristics you know characteristics given to product okay so the uh, ranking from like a best to the worst is uh, well uh, so this could be like a misleading so an in depth actually analysis is needed so uh, let's see what are the strategies for like a such situations so minimizing like a resources toxicity and uh, uh, harmfulness so under that there are two like a major uh, strategies okay uh, we will see one by one so so select non toxic and harmless harmless materials avoid toxic or uh, harmful materials for product components minimize the hazards of toxic and harmful materials avoid materials that emit toxic or harmful substances during pre production you know avoid additives that emit toxic or uh, harmful substances such as vocs we have discussed you know the paints and other like a uh, finishing materials used in the furniture and uh, like interior uh, like a uh, surfaces avoid technologies that process uh, toxic and harmful materials you know avoid uh, toxic or harmful surface treatments you know avoid uh, products that do not consume toxic and uh, harmful uh, the, uh, like materials 
you know so uh, and avoid materials that emit toxic or uh, harmful like substances during uses avoid materials that emit toxic or harmful substances during disposal so based on the like life cycle uh, like a uh, stages we can go for actually uh, like uh, each and every uh, stage and we can rework you know so that the overall minimization in toxicity can be addressed at uh, all those levels uh, finally like a uh, select non toxic and harmless energy resources so select energy resources that reduce the dangerous emissions during like a uh, pre production and production stages you know uh, select energy resources that reduce dangerous emissions during like a uh, distribution stages you know during like a uh, use stage and uh, during like a uh, uh, like a uh, uh, like a uh, the, uh, the resource that reduces dangerous residues and toxic and uh, harmful waste also at the end of its like a uh, uh, life cycle stage so these are the actually stage uh, approaches which could be utilized for like uh, uh, reducing the toxicity and reducing the actually waste finally like uh, we have this uh, design for optimizing uh, resource renewability and biocompatibility uh, so optimizing material renewability and biocompatibility uh, optimizing energy renewability and biocompatibility so we are seeing there there are always like a two uh, like a you know uh, components to any like a uh, such analysis one is on the like a uh, material and resources part and second is on the energy part so we have to uh, keep focusing on uh, both of these uh, uh, actually components let's see one example over here so for like a design for like a renewability and biocompatibility uh, select renewable and biocompatible energy uh, resources use renewable energy resources so this is actually solar lawn mower because uh, uh, this grass cutting uh, uh, this machines usually what we use in our like uh, homes they are actually either uh, driven by like a uh, like a uh, like a hydrocarbons or maybe they use like a electricity from the like a, a grid so is it possible that we can go for like a such solution so that uh, this uh, keeps on actually uh, moving uh, actually this uh, grass you know on a, on a regular interval you know uh, and it utilizes only like uh, this uh, actually uh, solar energy because most of these uh, times uh, uh, this operates in the daytime and it remains like outside so that the design can be actually facilit uh, facilitated in such a way that it can be designed in a weatherproof manner which it remains outside which actually takes care of its own like a, a recharging it takes care of the uh, moving of this lawn so this is one very simple solution what we are talking about over here another if you see select renewable and biocompatible materials use biodegradable materials for like a compostable products you know pots for like a plants you know and made of like a corn starch uh, uh, biodegradable polymer by uh, no amount so this is the one actually a particular company and particular product we are talking about over here so well plastic has uh, impregnated in uh, in most of our like uh, products these days so if it is possible why can't we use like a starch based uh, like a biodegradable uh, polymers uh, which uh, uh, at the end of their life cycle if they can uh, go uh, like uh, without leaving uh, any like a uh, toxic residues in the ecosystem so we are talking about here like a resource renewability which depends on regrowing a specific uh, uh, speed you know extraction frequency so a resource is renewable if a context related like a f uh, anthropic like a consumption rate you know is lesser than the natural regrowing rate so uh, the nature has actually this uh, replenishing uh, actually capacity for like a uh, uh, natural elements so but uh, but there is always a threshold so the our consumption like uh, we, we we discussed in the uh, like uh, one of the previous lectures the, the bio capacity uh, and the uh, actually overall actually uh, like a footprint of the uh, like a growth and development so that should not actually exceed the bio capacity well uh, most of the uh, products in today's time are actually doing that so how uh, this consumption rate can be lowered you know uh, compared to the natural like a regrowing regrowing rate and natural like a replenishment uh, rate so that is the actually uh, the thing what we are talking about over here so under like uh, this uh, renewability and biocompatibility uh, like a uh, discussion we have like a uh, two major strategies over here to talk about select renewable and biocompatible materials and uh, uh, select renewable and biocompatible energy sources so in this one use renewable materials avoid exhaustive uh, materials use uh, residual materials of production processes use retrieved components from disposed products use recycled materials alone or combined with primary materials use biodegradable materials you know finally in this uh, uh, actually strategy we have like use renewable energy resources engage the uh, cascade approach you know select energy resources with high uh, second order efficiency 
further moving on like a uh, product lifespan optimization how the longevity can be extended how the product can be made actually uh, serviceable for a longer period of time minimizing the uh, need of like a additional or the second unit of the same material so design for product component lifespan extension design for like component use like a intensification so we will see uh, in this illustration over here so if you see like a, uh, for the like a short product and component life from pre-production to production to distribution and uses you know uh, how this uh, effect can actually uh, like a uh, can actually enhance the longevity uh, of a, uh, like any like a product and system so uh, if you see on uh, this parameter new technologies and techniques with the lower resources use consumption okay so this is the actually uh, at the end of it they go for the disposal and uh, the same function in time if you see so the disposal and the uses comes the disposal actually uh, is relatively smaller the use is actually longer then comes the distribution production and pre production so it it gets actually uh, you know uh, inverted you know so uh, actually updating of the like a component causing like a resource consumption so the, here we, if we see the the time span actually uh, like a required for actually a product to like a function and it gets like a you know at the end of its life cycle you know that can be actually uh, actually extended so the the need for like a, another actually item this another like a same product can be actually uh, minimized for example if you see over here this is a beautiful example actually taken from like a uh, like a home based actually furniture you know so the uh, see the how the adaptability uh, is actually utilized over here as one of the like a strategic points and the product's life cycle the product actually the longevity of product is extended for a longer period of time so you see the child over here the this child actually has grown into this uh, like a girl and now uh, further like a in her like a young age so the same set of these uh, uh, like a components of this product you know they are actually designed uh, in such a way that they can be uh, like changed you know by the combination of this they can be changed into like a you know another set of like a product so uh, this actually uh, the has turned into a, like a table over here and another like a study table over here over a, like a period of time so design multifunctional and reconfigurable products to facilitate their adaptability for changing cultural and physical characteristic okay so like if you see like this stroke can be transformed from like a changing table to like a table for like a kids to a desk for like a young people so this is how the same product you know by uh, by uh, rearranging its component in like a certain way it it gets uh, like a you know additional like a uses and so that is an extended actually lifespan of a product so how this uh, lifespan actually optimization can be done so there are some uh, strategies listed down over here like designing appropriate like lifespan so design durable components you know uh, choosing materials and appropriate ways to preserve performances in relationship with the uh, the uh, uh, foreseen uses condition you know design components with co extensive lifespan you know design lifespan of uh, uh, replaceable components according to scheduled duration you know select durable materials according to the product performance and lifespan you know avoid selecting durable materials for uh, uh, temporary products or component further we have a strategy of design for uh, reliability so reduce overall number of components so that the system remains uh, simpler you know simplify the product you know eliminate weak license you eliminate the weaker components you know further uh, the third uh, strategy over here is facilitate upgrading and adaptability well how you can do like uh, there are some points given over here enable and facilitate software upgrade enable and facilitate hardware upgrade you know design modular and dynamically configured products to facilitate their adaptability for changing environments you know design multifunctional and dynamically configured products to facilitate their adaptability for changing cultural and physical individual backgrounds you know design products that can be upgraded and adapted on site design complementary tools and documentation for product upgrade and upgradation so at the end of the like a normal like a lifespan of that product you know there should be some support so that that product can be upgraded into a new product you know, so there's such actually a knowledge source is such actually uh, actually uh, these uh, these uh, complementary tools and documentation must be actually uh, given along with that uh, product at the time of the purchase finally we have uh, this uh, strategic uh, like a uh, uh, this point of like a facilitate uh, maintenance so simplify access and disassembly to components to be like a maintained uh, avoid narrow slits and holes to facilitate access for like a cleaning you know pre arrange and facilitate the substitution of short life components 
equip the product with easily uh, usable tools for maintenance you know equip products with diagnostic and our uh, auto diagnostic system for maintainable components you know design products for easy on site maintenance enabling parts cleaning and our uh, replacements design complementary maintenance tools and documentation design products that need less maintenance so of course uh, uh, by designing products uh, which require a, a lesser maintenance and repairing you know we can optimize on the uh, overall efficiency of that product and overall longevity of that product further uh, in this we have four more uh, strategies over here facilitate repairs facilitate reuse facilitate remanufacturing uh, intensify uses so arrange and facilitate disassembly and reattachment of easily uh, damageable components you know design components according to standards so that uh, they can fit from like one product to another uh, equip products with automatic damage uh, diagnostic systems you know design uh, products for facilitated on site repairs so that uh, they need not be uh, taken to the service centers you know design complementary repair tools materials and documentation uh, on the strategy of facilitating reuse increase the resistance of easily damaged and uh, expendable components you know arrange and facilitate access and removal of retrievable components design module uh, modular and replaceable components design components according to standards to facilitate replacement design reusable uh, uh, auxiliary parts design refilling and reusable packaging design products for secondary use further we have uh, this is strategy of facilitating remanufacturing so design and facilitate removal and substitution of easily expendable components design structural parts that can be easily separated from external visible ones provide easier access to components to be remanufactured calculate accurate tolerance parameters for easily expendable connections design for excessive use of material for easily deteriorating surfaces so this is how actually we can uh, uh, allow the product to be like a remanufactured into some some more like a uh, some more like a some some other product or some other like a design so it's like allowing uh, the, the preserving the actually the finishing of a preserving actually the structural integrity of it so that these uh, parts as a whole or as a like a component can go into like a utilize as a like a uh, remanufacturing like a item further we have a uh, uh, intensify uses a uh, strategy so uh, design product service uh, for like a shared use so that uh, a number of people can uh, make use of the same product so that they need not buy it like uh, buy it uh, independently so many times you know design multifunctional products with common substitutable uh, components you know design products with integrated functions design for products or product part on demand you know design for products or products parts uh, on availability so these are actually some uh, actionable points which we saw uh, under the like a uh, strategies for like a, a lifespan optimization so that the product can be used for like a li extended actually period of time so this is how this can be uh, facilitated so design for uh, uh, like an extension of the lifespan so design for like recycling design for energy recovery design for even uh, composting further uh, in this topic we will discuss about uh, materials recyclability like a combustion you know compo uh, composting uh, etc so it, it depends on like a specific material characteristics performance recovery and cost of like a processes products like architecture recycling phases you know collection transportation uh, separation disassembly you know or crushing identification cleaning secondary raw materials production etc let's see some uh, strategies from like uh, this uh, uh, actually uh, topic so for like extending the lifespan of the material so there are four uh, uh, strategies listed down over here adapt the cascade approach you know select material with the most efficient uh, uh, recycling technologies facilitate end of life collection and transportation and uh, material identification so for these uh, the actionable points are uh, arrange and facilitate recycling uh, of materials in components with lower mechanical requirements arrange and facilitate recycling of materials in components and lower aesthetical requirements you know arrange and facilitate energy recovery for materials throughout combustion well uh, further we have uh, select materials that easily recover its original performance characteristics after recycling so that it can be reused effectively uh, in its like a uh, after like a, the recycling you know avoid composite materials or when necessary choose easily recyclable ones the the one uh, point i have been talking like a uh, several times we must actually go for simpler materials which are easy to like a uh, dismantle or bifurcate at that time at the end of their life cycle otherwise they, it will become like uh, extremely difficult to uh, reuse them into like a uh, uh, some more ways uh, engage geometrical solutions like ribbon to uh, ribbing to increase uh, polymer stiffness instead of reinforcing fiber you know uh, uh, prefer thermoplastic polymers to thermo setting you know prefer uh, heat proof thermoplastic polymers to fire proof additives you know design considering the uh, secondary use of the materials once recycled 
Uh, the next uh, we can see this strategy of facilitate end of life collection uh, and uh, transportation. So this is one of the uh, important actually uh, strategies over here design in compliance with the pod, uh, product retrieval system so that it can be retrieved you know uh, minimize overall weight you know minimize cluttering and improve stackability of discarded products so that they can be uh, brought back in an like, uh, efficient way. Uh, design for the uh, compressibility of discarded products so that again like optimization on the space uh, while like uh, transporting and packaging provide uh, the user with information about the disposing uh, modalities of the product or its parts lastly we have this uh, strategy of material identification uh, codify different materials to facilitate their identification you know provide uh, additional information about the materials age number of times recycled in the past and additives like a uh, used you know indicate the existence of the toxic or harmful materials you know use a uh, standardized materials identification system you arrange codifications in easily visible places you know avoid codifying after components production stages so these are actually uh, standard actually procedures what must actually follow uh, while actually uh, packaging and labeling their products so that uh, this of like uh, informations are easily available uh, on like a, a product package so this will become very handy at the end of its like a, a life cycle stage so that uh, if it is like being taken for like recyclability or reusability or remanufacturability so uh, how and uh, what are the components that can be actually uh, used in those ways is can be like a easily uh, deciphered to uh, these codes and like uh, uh, this informations so uh, I have taken some uh, examples over here for you to understand like to facilitating end of life collection and transportation uh, design for compressibility of like a uh, discarded product. So this is one of the actually uh, actionable points we discussed under this uh, uh, like a strategy. So you see like uh, this uh, actually a particular brand of these uh, uh, water actually bottles. They actually design their bottles in such a way so that after like uh, they are discarded they can be easily actually compressed in a like a smaller actually volume. You know so it becomes very easy and optimal for the recycler to collect these uh, uh, actually discarded water bottles and take it to the facility. Further, we have uh, this example over here minimizing the number of different uh, incompatible materials. So use only one material per product or like a per sub assembly. So here if you see like uh, this Hermel Miller again is back with the, one of the uh, very good examples. So the chairs like a back made with one material only. So the entire this back unit doesn't utilize actually a combination of like a different materials, you know, which is very difficult to uh, segregate or dismantle them at the end of their life cycle. Uh, so uh, th this whole unit of this bag can be uh, again directly taken uh, for like a recycling and uh, dismantling because this is a one actually uh, single material altogether. So this is one actually uh, some examples uh, we saw in the real life. So the, how such kind of like uh, intentions you know can help in uh, in designing actually products with these uh, uh, thought processes. Further we will see like extending uh, the lifespan of the uh, product uh, over here there are some more actually points uh, given uh, some strategies uh, uh, are given over here which will facilitate actually uh, extending the life cycle uh, lifespan of a, like a, a product so the strategies listed over here are minimize the number of different uh, incompatible incompatible materials you know facilitate cleaning you know facilitate composting you know facilitate combustion finally so integrate uh, functions to reduce the overall number of uh, uh, materials and components uh, mono material strategy only one material per product or product uh, uh, like a per sub assembly you know use only one material but processed in sandwich structure you know use compatible materials that could be recycled together you know within the product or sub assembly you know for joining use uh, the same or compatible materials as in uh, components to be joined so we saw in the like a previous example of this uh, Herman Miller chair so how the same material is used in the different components of the back you know so minimizing actually the uh, the issue in uh, like a dismantling and uh, taking it off for a strategy of facilitating uh, cleaning avoid unnecessary coating procedures you know avoid irremovable coating materials which cannot be actually taken out you know uh, facilitate removal of contaminants you know use coating procedures that comply with coating uh, uh, coated materials you know avoid uh, adhesives or choose ones that comply with the materials to be recycled Prefer the dyeing of uh, internal polymers rather than the surface painting. You know, avoid using additional materials for making our uh, codification. Mark and codify materials during uh, uh, molding itself so that uh, there is no need of actually uh, painting and uh, putting up these coats later on. Mark and codify materials uh, during uh, like a molding and codify polymers uh, using like a laser so that there is no like uh, additional uh, like uh, ink or uh, such kind of like a uh, uh, like a complex actually uh, pigments needed to uh, put on those coats. 
Further, we have this uh, strategy of facilitating composting. So select materials that degrade in the expected uh, end of life environment. You know, avoid combining non-degradable materials with products that are going to be composted. You know, facilitate the separation of non-degradable materials. You know, and uh, finally, we have uh, this strategy of facilitating uh, combustion. So select high energy materials for products that are going to be incinerated. You know, avoid materials uh, that emit dangerous substances during incineration. You know, avoid additives that emit dangerous substances during incineration. You know, facilitate the separation of materials that would compromise the efficiency of combustion with low energy value. So these are the actually points we saw over here. Like even the compounds such as like adhesives are very important to be like a, uh, chosen like a judiciously. So that at the end of their life cycle, they are not going to create a mess. While even if we are going for like incineration or uh, combusting them so such is the actually level of sensitivity that is uh, needed to uh, address actually uh, these uh, critical issues finally like a uh, design for like a disassembly so of uh, like a parts components you know product life optimization of materials like material life extension so one of the actually beautiful examples taken over here for like a design for disassembly uh, is this chair. So if you see like a uh, reduce and facilitate uh, operations of disassembly and separation, overall architecture prioritize the disassembly of more easily damageable uh, like a components. So this is uh, this uh, mirror seat actually from like a Herman Miller. So the most damageable parts and uh, materials that can't be recycled together are the first and easy to be dismantled first. So you see like uh, the, uh, the uh, all the components of uh, this actually chair are laid out over here. So they are easy to like uh, uh, dismantle, you know, disassemble. Okay, and accordingly they can uh, actually uh, recycle these parts or reuse these parts, you know, uh, uh, depending upon their condition. So further we have for uh, uh, under the, like a last uh, actually this uh, set of like a strategy designed for like a disassembly. So we have three uh, strategies listed down over here. Reduce and facilitate operations of disassembly and uh, separation. You know overall uh, like architecture. You know, shape uh, of like a components and parts. Shape and accessibility of joints. So prioritize the disassembly of toxic and uh, dangerous components or the materials. Prioritize the disassembly of components and materials with higher economic value. Uh, prioritize the disassembly of uh, uh, more easily damageable components. Prioritize the disassembly of the parts that are more subject to technological or aesthetic obsolescence. You know, engage uh, modular structures. You know, divide the product into easy, separable, and manipulable sub-assemblies. You know, minimize overall dimensions of the product. Minimize hierarchically uh, dependent connections between the components. You know, minimize different directions in the disassembly route of components and materials. Increase the linearity of the disassembly route. You know, engage a sandwich system of disassembly with central joining elements. So these could be the actually uh, actionable points to facilitate uh, uh, responsible actually disassembly and uh, separability. Uh, finally, like with the strategy of like a shape of components and parts. So the actionable points are like avoid a difficult to handle components. You know, avoid asymmetrical components unless required. You know, design uh, leaning surfaces uh, and grabbing actually features in compliance with the standards. You know, arrange leaning surfaces around the product center of gravity. Design for easy centering on the component base. You know, finally, uh, shape and accessibility of joints. Avoid uh, joining systems that require uh, uh, simultaneous interventions for opening. You know, minimize the overall number of fasteners. You minimize the overall number of uh, uh, different fastener types that demand different tools. You know, avoid uh, difficult to handle fasteners. You know, design as uh, accessible and recognizable entrances for dismantling. You know, uh, design uh, accessible and controllable dismantling points. So these are the actually uh, they, they seem very like a you know who cares for like actually kind of like a points, but they are very important while a product actually goes for a disassembly. So you can take maybe a, a raw or maybe a discarded actually piece of furniture or any product in your house, and you try dismantling it and see like how you experience you know uh, for like a disassembly so just imagine yourself as the recycler person who will be dismantling that unit by hand in some facility so how well how easy that product is for you to like open it up so that you can divide it into its like a number of like a components you know you can segregate and send them for the like a responsible uh, recycling so you will understand like how important it is to uh, consider these points for like a design for disassembly 
uh, product life cycle design strategies to the the uh, priorities do some uh, like a uh, strategies have greater priorities than others for every product some strategies have greater uh, priorities than others it is important to be able to properly identify environmental design priorities you know and lc tools can be used to support this task well uh, we have seen actually in the, the number of strategies and number of like actionable points like which one to employ which one to actually apply you know in which product so that actually you also need to understand you know so that is what actually we are talking about here which is the greater priority you know you must actually uh, like analyze before actually going to choose uh, the relevant strategy uh, for carrying out actually those uh, tasks so it is very important to understand for example a vehicle you know uh, utilizes like we have seen in the like lc analysis so this is where actually lc analysis become uh, very useful to understand the, the scenario of a product like how it is performing over like a different life stages so for example an automobile actually consumes you know a huge amount of uh, uh, like a fuel over its uh, entire life cycle so the priority should be to minimize the uh, fuel consumption okay and for example a chair uh, like we have seen in this uh, like a lecture a chair is used in a like a, a house or in a office you know for like a, a definite actually purpose the purpose is very very like a fixed and a clear so uh, is it possible that we can extend the lifespan of it you know so that we can keep on using 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 for a, lo a longer period of time because a chair need not be actually changed just for the sake of it or just for actually the uh, going for like other like a, a silly reason so that I, I i want to just change my interiors i change i, I want to redo my interiors or so, uh, things like that so these are actually a very uh, bad habits as far as like the habits and behaviors are concerned and uh, we have seen in the consumerism chapter how such kind of like attitude and behaviors are actually causing damages to the uh, ecosystem so we must actually control for starting from the behaviors and habits to the like operations and uh, we must actually learn how to priorities and what are the priorities uh, which actually must take care of uh, while designing uh, life cycle or the functional unit of a product uh, with this we are uh, almost at the end of uh, this lecture so this is the last actually topic of discussion over here so about a product life cycle design methods and tools so in this uh, we will see there are some actually tools and methods and techniques given uh, uh, under the banner of this uh, organization the logo you can see at the uh, left bottom uh, side over here lens this is learning network for sustainability uh, you can search uh, this website the the address was actually uh, given in the beginning I, i'll give it again at the end of this presentation and uh, you can go to that website you can register yourself as a student or as a academician or professional or researcher and uh, you will be able to download uh, these tools and uh, techniques and uh, methods uh, for like uh, applying in your like a uh, design projects so you can uh, go for referring actually these books these books are uh, this book uh, is uh, like uh, available like a uh, freely to download and you know, also these uh, are like uh, some of these books are actually developed uh, as a uh, like a uh, uh, common actually open source uh, material for like a uh, knowledge uh, dissipation around like a uh, uh, in a uh, uh, like a spss msds and uh, de actually uh, techniques Further, you can uh, see like a MSDS, like a method for like a product design for environmentally, uh, environmental sustainability. So this uh, actually table you can see over here. So this diagram actually gives us a flow diagram, uh, like how to take a like a, a product design uh, in like a phases. So you can see like a process and tools to orientate are given in this uh, actually left column, and process tools on like a environmental assembly uh, and this assessment are given on this uh, right column, and how this exchange actually is taking uh, place in between. So you see it starts from uh, uh, like the actually product uh, strategies and the brief. So it goes on for like a LC on reference product for like a design. you know so this is sima pro is one of the actually lca tools which gives actually uh, knowledge about uh, uh, conducting the lca okay and then from here uh, you can go to this uh, environmental design uh, priorities identification from where uh, you can identify the priority areas where to intervene and how to intervene you know and then uh, you can go to sustainability focused like idea generation you can go for like a uh, condu uh, conducting your brainstorming and uh, uh, this conceptualization like how to uh, go for the intervention further you can go for the product uh, concept development etc and uh, you can go for like a abridged uh, lca check you know further like a qualitative uh, studies uh, qualitative like assessments also then you can go for like a check for sustainability de uh, design pro uh, priorities you can use uh, these tools like ipsa and radar etc ics which are given on the uh, this uh, website of this lens polymy 
Further from here, you can go for like a most promising like a con uh, concept selection. You can uh, choose the best concept uh, uh, which seems like a relevant for the uh, actually stage. And from here, you can go for like a product design, you know. And and then again, you can go for like average LCA analysis, impact reduction, etc. Using uh, these actually tools. And uh, further again, for like you can go for like a low environmental impact process selection for like a manufacturing and a fabrication, etc. You know. So to accordingly, you can uh, use uh, you can choose the tools and uh, methods to. Uh, undertake uh, this exercise you know and then uh, further uh, you can go for actually engineering the product you know lc of uh, uh, comparison for environmental quality communication that further lastly you can conduct another uh, like a check for the its a final impact uh, so some of these uh, tools and uh, assessment methods are uh, available free of cost to download and utilize in your like design projects you can visit uh, this website you can uh, register as a member and you can uh, avail uh, these tools you know and you can utilize them uh, in your like design exercises finally these are the actually reference materials uh, more reading materials on uh, this concept of like spss msds and uh, de uh, you would be i'm sure you would be uh, happy to uh, go and refer these you can be a member also on this platform it is a uh, interesting actually platform from uh, uh, where uh, uh, you get to meet uh, researchers and academicians and students from across the world you know uh, learning about their like approaches how they are utilizing uh, like a such a, like a wealth of this knowledge in their like a own context you know how well you can do so there is a lot of like a exchange also which happens uh, periodically so with this uh, uh, we have actually reached to the end of uh, this lecture uh, thank you everyone